Okay. My point is that you can take almost any historical figure and you can paint a picture, as Anthony said, of, of negative and positive. To me, what Churchill achieved in World War II overrides everything else. But why, though? So why does that supersede the fact that he uh, caused thousands, tens of thousands of black deaths and potentially, again, it's, it's uh, arguable, but potentially his decision-making led to the deaths of millions of Indians. So what you're saying... But that's not the true. Deaths, but, OK, so... But what we can say categorically is what I said about the Kenyan concentration mm. camp. So if you think that the Kenyan concentration camps wasn't monstrous, then what you're doing is you're negating the thoughts and feelings and experiences Actually, of everyone Actually, I don't know. I don't... Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you are feeling good. Today we'll be checking out another video by Piers Morgan titled Churchy was a monster. Piers Morgan debates Winston Churchy with Black Lives Matter activist. Wow, I believe this is going to be an interesting one. Let's check it out. Go. Well, I'm joined now by Iman Aiton, who's organised her own Black Lives Matter protest, including the likes of actor John Boyega and Madonna, and royal historian and author Sir Anthony Selden. So welcome to both of you. This is a really incendiary debate now. Never used to be. It used to be just everyone used to agree Winston Churchill was a national hero who saved us from the Nazis, and that was it. Mm -hmm. But now he's not, and I'll start, Iman, by saying this. I understand why young people look back at some of the things that Churchill was recorded as saying, mm. some of the views that he held, mm. and I understand why it may colour the judgement about him. Mm. Literally, mm. actually. Um, but I also believe you should take all great figures in totality. I agree. Whether it's Gandhi, Mandela, Churchill, whoever it may mm. be. And the welter of positives for Winston Churchill, to me, outweigh attitudes and occasional comments which were by far the norm of that era and not I wouldn't be tolerated today and what's your reaction to that I totally agree with you so I don't actually harp on on the covert racism or the kind of you know the comments like black people are savages and, and you know Indians are a beastly race I don't actually hold on to that because you're right it was during those times not that it's acceptable we can mm. safely say it wasn't what I hold on to for example is yes he was a hero I think I was given the same kind of narrative that most people were that this is a, a British hero um, admittedly it was only when I saw Churchill was a racist, that graffiti that was written on his statue during mm. Black Lives Matter, mm. that prompted me as a random person to say, you know what, I'm going to go home and research Winston Churchill. And in doing that, I found the two things that resonated with me personally. The first was the four million Indians that died due to the Bengal famine, which was a direct result of Winston Churchill's decision making. The second would have to be, not, hold on, hold on, oh, no, okay. fair enough, fair enough. But, but on that, I'll this. come back to you because that is simply not true. Okay, you, you the, can tell The me mythology why. that's built up around what happened, and I'll let the great historian uh, fill in the blanks here, but the, there's a lot of mythology that's been fermenting about Churchill's culpability over the Bengal famine. But for anything else, he didn't cause the famine. The famine was caused by a cyclone. It was then massively exacerbated by a failure to get resource mm. and food into the area because of the war and because of Japan's stranglehold on the area and so on and so on. Churchill did direct other countries, including America and Australia, to try and send grain to Bengal. But he also prioritised, when it really came to it, British troops who were going to die of hunger as well. And as a British Which Prime Minister in a war, I'm not sure you can sincerely blame him. Now, Which I've heard, and I totally agree with so, that. So my point is that it's very easy to say that Churchill caused the famine and the death of four, four million people. But actually, when you get into the weeds about what happened there, mm -hmm. that's simply not accurate historically well i said it was due to his decision making and secondly that's not the only thing that resonated with me the second thing that resonated with me with his was the fact that he built kenyan concentration camps so please school me and tell me i am wrong he built Kenyan concentration camp seven years after World War II, seven years after defeating fascism, seven years after getting rid of concentration camps for Jews. He decided after seven years of growth and learning and all of this peace and all of this amazingness that Britain has achieved, we're now going to build concentration camps and not for Jews. This time it's going to be for Kenyans. And we're now going to start making pillars or, or sorry, uh, rather, uh, like uh, these kind of different instruments that literally crush and rip the testicles off of Kenyan men. And we're going to do that seven years after defeating okay. Nazism. So, yes, I've got a different perspective. We've heard the view, and it's a view clearly shared by a lot of young people. I mean, staggering these new statistics now of people who really dislike 
Churchill and have no respect for him? Well, I think it's partly uh, the fact he was built up to be such a big figure. But for me, uh, everything uh, that has been identified um, that Iman is talking about is important and needs to be weighed into the equation. Thank you, Anthony. That's all I want. That's okay. all I want. That, or, uh, because we are all mixtures of good and bad. I agree. Every leader... And I think for young people to have the evidence and weigh it up, mm. I'm just going to mention three good things he did. And by the way, I agree the treatment are in, uh, uh, of the Kikuyu tribe yes. in Kenya during that period of suppressing Mau Mau mm. was utterly deplorable. Seven years after World War II. In from 1952 racism. onwards. Uh, uh, but this is what he did. He did, uh, on the welfare state, he was a core person building the welfare state before the First World War and as Prime Minister in the Second World War, he oversaw the beverage report and encouraged it, mm -hmm. uh, which has been enormously the benefit. Secondly, he was the first politician to spot um, that at the end of the Cold War in 1953, he made an extraordinary speech after the death of Stalin saying we can't carry on as we were. And thirdly, there was uh, what he did in the Second World War where... Uh, Hitler, 6 million Jews, 50 million dead in that war. He did stand up when Britain was alone. Mm. So uh, to give young people uh, the evidence on both sides and let them come uh, to their own judgment mm. and to recognise that every leader, us, me, you, Pierce, everyone, is a mixture of good and bad. But and not, monster, not monstrous, and that's my issue. Not everyone is a mixture of monstrous and heroes. Well, you so say good that. and bad is one you say thing, that. but being monstrous but take, is deciding take, to actually crush all right, and take, rip take one of my black men. All right, that's but take my, one of my heroes like Nelson Mandela. Mm -hmm. He was on the no-fly list for this country mm. throughout most of the 70s, right? He was a man that many viewed to be a terrorist. Mm. And then he came out and he turned out to be one of the all-time great peacemakers. Now, again, do you take his life in totality, Mandela, or do you say that actually anyone involved in any form of activity which could be classed as terrorism is a monster? Did and Nelson therefore there is, there is no sanction, chance for a public figure to did redeem. Did Nelson Mandela sanction making pliers that crushed and ripped the testicles off of black men? Did Nelson Mandela do that, Piers? What he did sanction was he sanctioned activity which by today's standards would be construed as terrorism. But, so we can safely say that, yes, everyone is going bad. I'm not negating that point. I think, the issue is, I think my, point say, is, my point is that you can take almost any historical figure and you can paint a picture, as Anthony said, of, of negative and positive. To me, what Churchill achieved in World War II overrides everything else. But why, though? So why does that supersede the fact that he uh, caused thousands, tens of thousands of black deaths and potentially, again, it's, it's uh, arguable, but potentially his decision-making led to the deaths of millions of Indians. So what you're saying... But that's not the true. Deaths, but, OK, so... But what we can say categorically is what I said about the Kenyan concentration mm. camps. So if you think that the Kenyan concentration camps wasn't monstrous, then what you're doing is you're negating the thoughts and feelings and experiences actually, of everyone Actually, I don't know. Else. I don't actually negate anything that Churchill did uh, on the negative side, I think a lot of the things he said were certainly racially tinged but at best. But what about the things that he did? What about the pliers I've just told you? No, no, I, we're not defending that at all, right? So, and that's the point. We need to balance the argument. I agree with Anthony. Yeah, but my we point is, my the point is, argument where on, right, but where do, I agree, but where on your balanced argument hmm. does the pendulum swing to saving the world from the Nazis. Oh, I agree. No, see, this is the thing. I'm not the extremist. I don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Maybe you're used to those types of guests here. I'm not that type of person. I believe in balance. So I actually agree with you. I think he did incredible things. Okay. But I think it's also important to acknowledge that he also did really monstrous things. And we should present both arguments and allow people to establish as indeed, their own did you have. OK, so the much. sheer fact that we're having this discussion mm -hmm. now, that, that we are here able to talk, is because he led this country to stand up against a fascist dictator who, like many of the leaders in the world today, many want to... China, uh, Russia, North Korea and more, want to squeeze free debate, the kind of discussion we have at the moment. We can go back, have our separate lives. We're not going to be put in... We wouldn't prison. be having it under Nazi Germany, so, 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 right? So, I agree so, with you. I'm not disputing your so, point. Or so, so give mm. them the facts. And I think that perhaps it was inevitable. There was so much adulation of... Churchill, there's now a, a steep... I mean, that's a, that's a really extraordinary figure. 80% of young people have mm. a negative picture. I think that maybe in five years' time it will rebalance. Uh, so that, yeah. I, I think myself, 
will disagree, Mum, on this, that I, I think that, that it will be overwhelmingly positive about Churchill while not uh, uh, ignoring the downside. And I think if people can learn about humanity then, that, that, that the people's flaws, uh, including you know, what he did or what he sanctioned as prime minister uh, in the 1950s in Kenya, weigh all that, then that's real education. That's what history is about. I mean, there are proper arguments to be had about the, the carpet bombing of Dresden mm -hmm. in World War II, mm -hmm. yeah. which many people think was completely unacceptable. Churchill would argue, if he was here, he's not, but if he was, he would argue it was a necessary evil to facilitate the hastening of the ending of the war. Now, yeah. a lot of people don't agree with that historically. Uh, but if you're a wartime leader, you've got to make... Horrendous decisions. decisions. I totally agree with you. And I bring it back to just having an inclusive mindset. And I think that's the issue here, that many people seem to not... Uh, or let me just put it this way. I don't think people are disputing the fact that he's a hero. I think that many people are disputing the fact that he is also a monster. And that is where the problem lies, Piers. I'm not saying he's not a hero. Everything that you've just said, everything that you just said, I agree. I think it's awesome. But I also have to take into account that the Indian population that died, potentially because of his decision-making, probably wouldn't have called him a hero. I have to take into account that the men that were having their testicles ripped from their bodies probably wouldn't call Winston Churchill a, a hero either. So, again, it comes down to an inclusive mentality. When you take into account everyone's feelings... It becomes a lot harder to then definitively say someone is a hero or a villain. Okay. What you usually do is say they are both. You take into account they are racist, you take into account that they are a hero, and you take into account that they Anthony, are... Anthony, final point on Churchill. Uh, I that, well, I, di I think he sanctioned some monstrous things. He I, did indeed. Personally, I don't think he was a monster. I think he had a deeply... So sanctioning monstrous, monstrous things doesn't make you a monster. Is that right, Anthony? Let's just make uh, sure I, you're clear. Uh, if you do monstrous things, you're not a monster. Is that correct? I think that... Is that correct? Uh, well, let me ask, let me ask well, you a difficult question. Do you, think right. the, do you think the unleashing of two nuclear weapons in World War II at Hiroshima and Nagasaki, mm -hmm. was that justified or was that monstrous? I think those types of things are monstrous. Okay. Anything that kills so, anyone so, else is a monstrous OK, act. so you're calling, the, you're calling the American president that did that a monster. It's anyone and would, that kills anyone else is but that, it's a monstrous but that, act, but whether you want to see it fine, like but that but that brought not. to an end a war that would have killed many, many, many more people. But it still doesn't negate the fact that it was monstrous to the people that died, and that's what I'm trying to say, sure. that you're now putting well, about, your feelings and white people's feelings and Jewish about feelings white and British people? feelings above everyone else that had a, a negative interaction with this man. No, it's not about white people. You shouldn't... Or, See, that, I is. think you let yourself down when no, you say it is. that. White people, British people, Jewish people, the people that I typically, this is where I'm coming from, the people that I typically find defend Winston Churchill. There have been many black, let's be honest with ourselves here. But I typically find it's majority white because we have this, this real kind of um, admiration for the man. And so a lot of people... Well, quite really rightly, because he saved us from Nazi but Germany. But we have to take in consideration that he's I don't think anybody that thinks that racist. Winston Churchill... Nobody thinks he was an angel at all. But he, he took a lot of very difficult decisions. But they're not these decisions... But people are negating the fact that he is a monster. That is the issue. Be balanced. All right. Peers. You made balance. your point. You made your point. Uh, Anthony, I want to just yeah. talk to you quickly about your book. The Path of Peace, Walking the Western Front Way. Couldn't be more timely, obviously. Remembrance Sunday this weekend. When you wrote this book, have we learned the lessons that led to the catastrophe of the First World War, do you think? So... Uh, no, categorically not. I mean, as I was walking that, the Third World War was uh, in Ukraine perhaps about to unfold. It was the vision of a young soldier, Piers, who uniquely, it would seem, had a vision on building a path to peace, which I think is uh, fundamental, where we can have people... His vision was of all nations or all faiths or backgrounds walking side by side together to try to learn from the dead from both sides. So I walked back last summer, a thousand kilometres, a million paces through soil where 10 million, 10 million had bled to death or had their lives totally wrecked uh, in the effort of trying to build a path to peace. He was an extraordinary uh, visionary um, uh, young, uh, young man. And so, no, but it is by building understanding, building bridges with each other, mm. I think maybe not rushing myself uh, to condemn other people, to understand why they did things, that mm. we have the best hope for humanity. Um, and that's exactly why I wrote the book. And the Western Front Way now is the world's biggest commemoration project. Everyone can mm. walk it or cycle it. Um, it's going to become like the Northern uh, Camino. I think it was the best idea to come out of the First World War, Piers, even though it categorically hasn't ended the Second World War, didn't stop the Second World no. War. Uh, and went, but what other hope is there unless we just walk 
together, respect our difference, and indeed love each other mm. for our differences. Which is an inclusive mentality, by the way, just so okay. you know. Well, well I think we've respected point. each other's differences. Thank you. I wouldn't go as far as saying we love each other yet, but the night is young. Night is young. Uh, it's night. Anthony Selden, great to see you. Uh, Iman Aiton, thank you very much for coming in. I appreciate it. Wow. What an interesting debate. You can tell this was really, really heated to some extent just by the title of the video. Churchy was a monster. Piers Morgan debate Winston Churchy with Black Lives Matter activists. Wow. You can tell based on the facts and the points that I've given in this video, we can all agree that there is nothing has been perfect. Everyone has good sides. They also have their bad side. Just like uh, Piers Morgan have stated in this video that if you take every historical figure and try to paint a picture of them, there is no way you won't paint a picture of uh, positive and negative. You get bad, you get good, you get ugly. So just like the example uh, Piers Morgan have given, there's nothing as, there's nothing like being perfect. Every historical figure like uh, Churchy, Nelson Mandela, even Adolf Hitler, Hitler, everyone has their good side, they have their bad side. There's nothing like someone being perfect. I totally agree that, I uh, agree with uh, Imam, Imam in some of the points she gave, in some of the points she gave, uh, for the, uh, for the fact that Churchy uh, build a concentration camp for the Kenyans and at the end of the day, uh, he rip off their testicles. And I believe that is really very barbaric. As a black man, if I'm to find myself in such situation or in such position where someone take away what I'm supposed to use to nurture my, uh, generation, I don't think I'll be happy with that. I don't think I'll be happy with that. So I totally agreed uh, with Imam based on uh, some points she gave. But I also believe that there are also some good things uh, Churchy did. Uh, there are also some good things Churchy did. If not for the decision he took during his time, I believe even the free speech they are having right now, even the free, free speech uh, Piers Morgan and uh, Imam the debate they're having right now, I don't think uh, it will be possible, if not because of the uh, this, the decision Churchy have made uh, during this time to uh, bring the British people out of Nazism. So I believe there is no one that is perfect. Everyone has their good side. Everyone has their bad side. So I believe Churchy did some horrible things, but I also believe there are a lot of things you also do in order to be able to uh, uh, liberate uh, the British people. Just like the points that they have stated in this video, that they, if you take every historical figure uh, according to history, there's no way you won't see some good that have done. There's no way you won't see some bad. Just like uh, the example of Nelson Mandela they, they gave, that Nelson Mandela led uh, some group uh, into protests, into liberation and all that. But believe me, uh, some of the people he led uh, in order to be able to uh, defend their people, some of them were also violent. Some of them were also violent. That's what Piers Morgan was saying, that if it was to be during this time that some of his actions would have been considered as, as uh, ter terrorism. And if you also consider the history of America, other black people, Fought for the independent, fought for the independence of black, and fought to end racism. You can tell that there are some, there are also some violent, there are also some violent ones. But in all, they are all fighting for uh, the better good. So we have to understand that before you try to judge people, you have to look at their good side. You have, you also have to look at their bad side. You don't have to look just, uh, you don't have to just uh, judge them based on uh, the bad things they did you also have to consider the, the good thing they also did. Just like even I myself, I believe I, I have some things that I might have done that is not totally perfect. Just like sometimes you see people watching my reaction video, some of them, they have their different views that this 
black guy is not being honest. This black guy is being barbaric and all that. So people are always going to have different view about uh about what you do. And I believe that there's nothing as 100% perfect. People are always going to have their ups and downs. And I believe if you would have been uh, in the position where Chochi is, that he made those decisions, you could have also made some horrible decisions and you could have also made some good decisions. So before you judge people, you don't have to judge them based on uh, the wrong they did. You also have to consider the good thing they did. And we agree that right now British uh, uh, UK is a free country and it was all because of uh, the contribution that have been made by a lot of people a lot of people that were in position of power just are like churchy so we also have to appreciate them for that we don't we, we don't need to always condemn them because of uh, the bad things they did i agree i totally agree that there are some bad things they did just like uh iman mentioned that there are some certain problems certain situation churchy didn't handle where just like uh uh, uh he, he, he talks about that a lot of Indians lose their life uh, during the time of uh, famine because they have nothing to feed themselves on. And uh, Imam is blaming uh, blaming it on Churchy. That is because of the decision Churchy took. So if you were also to be in that position, there's no 100% that you would have done better. So we just have to believe that sometimes people have their bad, people have their good, there's nothing like being 100%. So I've really learned a lot listening to Imam, listening to Piers Morgan, and I've come to understand that, though I've come to understand based on the facts they have stated in this video that uh, Churchy has contributed a lot uh, to the British people, but we are not also going to deny the fact that there are also some horrible things he did, but nevertheless, his contribution uh, that he made to the British people is because of his contribution that right now everyone is having their freedom. So this is really interesting. So I would also like to hear your view on this topic. Was Churchy a racist or do you consider Churchy a uh, Winston Churchy a racist? Keep the comments coming. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day. Thank you.